to be led by the Holy Spirit. Everybody say after me, how to be led by the Holy Spirit. I want you to say it loud and say, how to be led by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. You know? The word of God made us to understand that the Holy Spirit is the top person of the Trinity. In the book of First John, chapter 1, chapter 5, sorry, First John chapter 5, verse 7, it said, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. These three are one. When we say Trinity, we are not saying that God is three. We are saying God has manifested himself to man in three ways. That is what we call Trinity. The three existence or manifestation of God to his children in three ways. One, he manifested himself as a father because he led us as a father himself from the time of Adam and Eve to the Old Testament time. He was leading us like a good father. So I tell you something. Yes, now, when Jesus came, he began to lead us as a son, as a son. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And now he is leading us as the Holy Spirit. This is the three ways God has manifested Himself. Now, these three, they are one. So I tell you something. Yes, sir. God is not three. God is not three. But God is one. Hear ye, O Israel, for the Lord our God is one. God is not three. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is Jesus. Holy Spirit is God. Holy Spirit is just one. On the throne, we are not going to see Jesus seated on the throne. Praise the Lord. We are going to see God on the throne. And where is the Holy Spirit inside God? Where is Jesus inside God? In the government to come, we are not going to see God seated on the throne. We will see who seated on the throne, Jesus. Where is God inside Jesus? Where is the Holy Spirit inside Jesus? Where is it alone? In this our dispensation, we are not seeing God, we are not seeing Jesus. But we are only feeling the Holy Spirit. Where is Inside the Holy Spirit. Where is Jesus? Inside the Holy Spirit. And where is the Holy Spirit? Inside us. Amen. Amen. You are complete. You look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. You are complete. complete. In him. Amen. Look at another neighbor. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Do you know that you are complete in him? We are complete in him. Because the fullness of God is in us. We are the carriers of the Trinity. When we go born again. For us to be led by the Spirit, we must first of all be born again. Why? Because the Holy Spirit leads us through our inward man. Everybody pay attention. When we go born again, our flesh is not born again. Our spirit is what is born again. As we are born again, our faith did not change. Our laws did not change. If you are here this morning, you are not born again. After this message, as you will give your love to Jesus, your face will not change. Your blessing will still be the way close to your hand. Come to this place. What is going to be born again is your spirit. Your real man. Our spirit is our real man. Because the spirit controls the world, the physical. When you go born again, now you allow your spirit to control your flesh. That is what the Lord of God said. Jesus said, we must be dead to flesh. Being dead to flesh means we allow the spirit to control the whole flesh. I am not saying, yes, it is not said anywhere in the Bible that our flesh is born again. And that is why, when we allow our flesh to control our spirit, we are carnally minded. A carnally minded person is that child of God who allows his flesh to control his spirit. 
when you are born again, you allow your spirit to control your flesh. Yes. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. So it is your spirit man that gets born again. And for God to lead you, you must first of all be born again. And Jesus told me, continues, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is for the blood spirit. Look at the devil. Ask your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. Are you learning something? Are you learning something? Look at the Lord and say, Neighbor. Neighbor. Be serious. Be serious. The Holy Spirit is taking us to a new dimension this morning. We can be in that shadow of the Amen. Human beings are made up of spirit, soul, and body. Come on. The body is this one that my God is in. The body is the one that died. And they put a mortuary. The man they open the ground and put that one is an earthly man. Now we have soul. Let a man that the soul also that listen to me very well. What people call soul is the spirit. The soul of a man is the house of the spirit. Because the spirit of man dwells in the soul. Now the spirit of man is not visible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Neither the soul of the man. Our soul is the seat of our intellect, our subconscious mind, our soul is the thinking ability where our residual knowledge is lying. Animal also has soul. You know, the fowl has soul, mosquito has soul. Because the mosquito thinks they have played two of us. You know, So, but they do not have spirit. Man is the only creature that has spirit. And that is why we are made in the image of God. When you hear that human beings are made in the image of God, because human beings is the only creature that has soul, I mean, that has spirit inside his soul. All animal, beast, lion, dog, goat, snake, they all have soul. The seed of their intellect. But they don't have spirit. We are not just higher animal. We are spiritual animals. Church, are you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We are spirit. We are all spirits in the body. One man died, the natural death we are talking about. What happened, especially the body of the world, what happened is that our spirit man lives our body. The spirit of a man do not die. But the body of a man that including his soul, but his spirit do not die. Animals have soul, their soul die. Many people will tell you the soul of a man. In some places, remember we said the soul that sinned shall die. It is time to liken the spirit because I have told you that the spirit of a man is inside the soul. Sometimes, but we will holistically call the spirit man the soul. But really, the soul of a man is not the spirit. Okay? Because animals also have the soul, but they do not have the spirit. Church, am I talking to you? Yes, you hear it in that way. The animals have soul. Antelope have soul, but they don't have spirit. In Bible times, sometimes they will write in the soul and the spirit are the same. That is why some people say, animal has soul. Human being has soul. Likening the soul and the same thing. No. We have soul, spirit, and body. What makes a man a man is the spirit. And it is the spirit that gets born again. Okay. Listen to me. Jesus did not die for other animals. But Jesus died for human beings. Why? Because human beings have the spirit. There is a life after death. There is a life after death. When we live here, we are going to another being. Higher life than this one. Listen to me. In that life where we are going, there is no repentance there. Where we have repentance in this here. Now that we are in the flesh, we can give our life to Jesus. But the life outside the here, that we are not living in the flesh again, we are not going to be born again there. No repentance. On that very day of that journey, you may ask for repentance, you will not see. Because then you are a spirit. Both born again and not born again are spirits. But when you get born 
again, the Holy Spirit of God will be sent to your human spirits. Are you getting what I'm saying? To an unbeliever, the Holy Spirit is not sent. Man was created and was given the Holy Spirit, the ash. Another one for the Holy Spirit is the word the ash. The first. When Adam committed that sin in the Garden of Eden, the Holy Spirit was separated from him. They got part of him. God that dies him, that facilitated the relationship between him and God was taken away. Very far. Adam was led by five physical senses rather than being led by one spirit. But when we got born again, he restored the spirit because Jesus had opened the way. I told you here that when Adam and Eve committed that sin, it needed the blood of an innocent, sinless one. And for all have sinned and have shot, fallen short of the glory of God, no man was found righteous. Until God sent his son Jesus, who came like a human being. But the process of a human being, he, called, he had flesh in him. So that through his blood, he can pay for that sin that Adam and Eve committed. When Jesus was on earth, Jesus became the firstborn in heaven. I don't know what Jesus was the firstborn in heaven. On the day of his baptism, the Holy Spirit came to him. So it is the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that qualifies your born again. Say, I am. Yes, when you don't have the Holy Spirit, you are not born again. Every child of God that is genuinely born again has the Holy Spirit in him. Now, this Holy Spirit is like a Bluetooth that we have. This Holy Spirit is like our Holy Ghost Zenda that we can communicate with God directly. If I have a phone that has Zenda and you have a phone that don't have Zenda, I cannot transfer it to you, two of us. Even if you have phone, where will you get the information that you need from me? So when you have the Holy Spirit, you have God's sender. You have the God sender. Because it is the Holy Spirit that He communicates to us. Being led by the Holy Spirit. How to be led? Two things are important here. For you to be led by the Holy Spirit, one, you must be willing to allow Him to eat you. If I am to do labor, or my wife at the head of the family, I am able to leave my wife because my wife has allowed me to leave her. Is it not true? Yes. If she said, you can leave me, you cannot. And this is one of the problems of families. When the woman did not welcome the husband's leadership. For the Holy Spirit to lead us, we must allow him to lead us. As many, Romans 8, 14, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of the Lord God. Therefore, every son of God must be led by the Holy Spirit. Say, I am. Yes, sir. Church, are you me? Yes, sir. I said, every child of God must be led by the Holy Spirit. You can't claim to be a child of God that you are lacking the leadership of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is leading you, then you know you are qualified to be called the sons of the Lord God. Jesus was the first son of God. Why? Because the Holy Spirit was leading him. He grew with power. In the power of the Holy Spirit. We read. And his faith was everywhere. Because he was obeying to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Church, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. A man became nonsense or will become nonsense when he lacked the leadership. Your Christianity becomes questionable. If the leadings of the Holy Spirit is not found in you, because as many that are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons of the Lord God. There is a term called living of the Holy Spirit. The living of the Holy Spirit simply means allowing you to lead you holistically. Listen to me. Most times, He may lead you through the wilderness. Most times, He may lead you through the sea. But every living of the Holy Spirit is highly 
profit them. It's highly and it's for your own good. It's for your own work. Good. He led them to the Red Sea. It was for their good. He led them to the wilderness. It was for their good. You remember, Brother Moses said, I will not go anywhere unless you go with me. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit appeared to him in a cloud. And they were going, the Holy Spirit was the one leading them like the Lyona. For those of you that drive sheep, you must have the Lyona that will lead you. For those of you that are uh, pilots, you must have the camera directions that will direct you. Otherwise, you will go the wrong way. Are you what I'm saying? Yes. So the Holy Spirit is like a Lyona. The Holy Spirit is like a camera direction. The north, south, east, west that is directing you. Until the Holy Spirit leads you, you will not get it right. Now listen to me. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit wasn't resident in the believer. I beg it again. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was a sort of epileptic in their life. The Holy Spirit comes and goes. If they consult the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will come. And the Holy Spirit was only resident in the Holy of the Holies in the temple. Remember the prayer Solomon prayed. After building the temple, King Solomon was led in the Spirit, having known that that was the era, the shadow of the original protocol. Solomon said, Oh Lord, I have finished building this temple. But even the heaven of heaven cannot condemn you. How much more this little place made by man? Does a God live in the house built by man? But as in this, come and stay here, O oh Lord. If the people enter into serious danger, if they face Jerusalem and come, come and hear them. Because all these things are the shadow of the written to come. Church and my church. Shadow. But now we are in the mountain. You know what you said there? That red cloth that separated the body of the body from the people got turned into two. Meaning that everybody have access. Everybody, the child of God, have access to the throne of grace. We have access to heaven. We don't go longer need a mediator. Somebody to come and speak to God on our behalf. No! We go direct. Those of you that are in those churches that you meet, pastor to meet God for you. It's wrong. You have access to meet your God. Because the Holy Spirit that is in you as a pastor is also in you. Everybody listen to me. The Holy Spirit is not more in me than is in you. It's all about how you are ready to walk. Like as I said in the morning session, does the computer know me more than you? Church, I'm asking. Does the computer, the computer in your house, does it know you more than me? No. Computer have no friend, computer have no thing. It is garbage in garbage. If I put information in the computer, the computer will give it out to me, two of us. For you to think that computer loves you more than me, or for you to tell you that computer loves me more than you, it's wrong. The information of God is universal and is for everyone, it's obtainable. It is only how I am ready for God that God is ready for me. Draw closer to God and God will draw closer to you. All this kind of your Oshoko Christianity. God is not happy with it because He is making His manifestation not to be more in your life. Because as you show yourself to God, God will show Himself to you. You are not getting things the way you want, not because God is wicked, but because you are not ready to serve Him well. Get highly committed to this God, and He will show Himself to you. Let them show Himself. But this time to God, he became a man after God's own And Saul was not ready. What happened? God rejected Saul. Does not mean that God is wicked because Saul rejected himself. He wasn't ready to do as commanded. Saul was doing it as he 
wish. Our God wants you to serve him as commanded. Say, I hear. This book of the law shall not be done out of your mouth. You must meditate day in and day out so that you will make your way what? Prosperous. Listen to me. Your prosperity is in your hand more than you think. Hello? If your God today is your making, if your wish today is your love making, our God wants you to reach and He has marshaled out the way of your riches. Only if you allow the Holy Spirit that He has deposited in you already to lead you. Are you getting what I'm For as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of the Lord God. And all the sons of God are the mothers of God. And all the lovers of God will have everything. Because he said, all things work together for good to them that love God. So, as many that are led by God are the lovers of God. As many that are led by God are those that will be prosperous in the land. This man, the hard times. Every lover of God is the product of success. Say, I know. So, you want to be prosperous in God? Allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Because he did it are very sweet. Church and man talking. Yes, sir. Now the Holy Spirit is not a Uber Uber. The Holy Spirit is not a Kaka. The Holy Spirit is not Mohammed or whoever. Do you know what? He said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will live right inside you. He's not going to come as a human being. He's not going to come as a pastor. The Holy Spirit comes in the life of believers. And we went inside him. After Jesus was well, the first born again who received the Holy Spirit, the next set of people that received the Holy Spirit we are the disciples of Jesus on the day of the Pentecost. And when we came, and the whole place was saturated, and the Holy Spirit was like a tongue of fire that rested on top of their heads, and they were qualified to be Spirit comes over you, your spiritual level must surely change. You must become an extraordinary human being. Holy Spirit makes your life extraordinary. Bible said they became drunk in the Holy Spirit. Peter that was fearful is no longer fearful. Peter that caught caught three times, who wanted, who was rejecting Jesus. of the Holy Spirit that's in you. This Holy Spirit that we release to us, but we are the one that bring out the real manifestation in us. By working in obedience, by working in obedience. The Holy Spirit can only be higher in your life by the way you are activating it. Most of us have already punched it. And God said, punch not the Spirit, punch not. Most of us have preached it already by our conduct. By our conduct. John chapter 14, verse 16 to 17, and we read 26. Let us read together. I want to go. I will pray the Father. I will read John 14, verse 16 to 17. Then verse 26. John 14, verse 16 to 17. And then 26. Verse 14 said, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Another comforter, which means that was first comforter, which was Jesus. So as he is living, listen, he said he will pray the Father. Remember, Jesus is God. He will pray the Father. He was talking to their understanding. He will be God who will send the Holy Spirit. He see. Praise the Lord. What he was trying to say, I will go and send the Holy Spirit. But he is saying I will pray my father because he is the father still. Church, am I talking? Yes, sir. 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it's yet him and never know him. But yet know him, for he works with you and shall be in you. He 
you see that? So the Holy Spirit is in us. He's not going to do a man. He's not a good woman. What about it? He's not a kaka. That he can and suit. He's not. That he shall and change him. No. He's not. He's not the Muslim man. The Adida. I respect him so much. He's a good man. Very powerful. To have had such crowd. But he's not the Holy Spirit. Ah, he's not Jesus. Listen to me. When Muhammad died, according to the Quran, he died and they buried him. And we know his grave. Two of us. We know where they buried him. If you go to Mecca, you see where they buried him. But Jesus died and raised. Come on. Can you see the difference? And when Jesus died, according to the Bible, and resurrected on the power as a superman. But Muhammad, as a great leader, he died and he's in the grave. He's still there now. But Jesus died. The grave cannot be the He was on the top of it. Now, I ask you, you should know who is the most powerful. Praise the Lord. The most times recognize Jesus. But Jesus, I mean, Muhammad is nowhere in the Bible. What they are saying now is that he is that Holy Spirit. He's not. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, he's going to live inside us. He's not going to fight any jihad or whatever. He's not. He is a spirit that is going to come and reside inside us. Not in the physical, but in the realm. Watch, 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 watch. I want to talk some important things. Verse 23. Verse not the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send to you in my name, shall send to you, sorry, I beg again, but... The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, when the Father will send him to you in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So when the Holy Spirit comes, there are things I'm telling you now that you don't know. But when I send that Holy Spirit, as I will come to you, he is going to reveal unto you many things I have said here that you cannot be called. Many mystery. Many hidden things that is beyond your comprehension. But when the Holy Spirit comes, He will help you to know them. Because at that time, they were ready to born again. Church, listen to me. It takes the born again to understand the born again language. Our heavenly language is only for those that are born again. One woman, one girl, came to church and saw the mother cry. The mother was filled with the Holy Ghost, was shivering, was shivering the book. The young girl went out and said, See, mother, see, mother, Jay! My son, you have disgraced us. See, mother, cry. Mother, who beat you now that you're crying? Mother smiled. Mother said, The more you come to this church, one day you will cry. One day, the girl got born again. And in the atmosphere of worship, the maids started crying. And they were going, they were driving home. The mother said, but I saw you crying today. Who put you? The girl smiled. That I have an infinite. I have a power that I cannot resist. That is the watch, the infinite of the Holy Spirit. Blessing you. Hallelujah. Most of you that cannot pray because the Holy Spirit you don't have it in the nation. Most of you find it difficult to preach the gospel. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, you cannot receive it in the land. You have not received it in the land nation. When the Holy Spirit comes, the invisible barrier shall be broken. Praise the Lord. Now listen to me. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and Opa Jack is still in you. No way. Because Opa Jack cannot withstand the Holy Spirit that is in you. The power in your father, sir, cannot withstand the Holy Spirit that is in you. So it is not true that the child of God will have a two spirit, Obanja spirit and Jesus spirit in it. It is not true. Obanja is in you because you are not born again. Obanja is in you because you are born again. You have not known your inheritance. You don't know your right. You are still a spiritual baby. And that is why you must study to know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hello. Hi. All this time. You know, we've been a very church all this you know. You must sit down to read and know what the word of God is saying. That's the point I want to bring up. The Bible always used the Holy Spirit in you, not you. Not you. In other words, it is 
testifying the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is going to perform the function of you in your life. When the Holy Spirit comes, He is going to act like a person to you. Holy Spirit is not just a feeling. It's a companion. It's a companion. It's a director. So for you to say he will go, for you to say he will come, he will reign. He is going to be like a father, like a guy, like a counselor, like a comforter. We are going to work with him. He is going to be in our spirit man. You know, I told you that, that your spirit man is the real man. The original. So Holy Spirit is going to be part of you. Praise the Lord. So he's a person. Because it's acting as a person to you. If you're a person, then the Holy Spirit is a person. But you know what the Holy Spirit is going to do? The Holy Spirit is going to meet together with your spirit. In the same way you're a person, the Holy Spirit is going to be a person. Because it's going to work with you in your spirit man. It's going to possess your spirit that your own physical spirit will have no authority again. Because everything he asks you to do in your spirit is what you are going to do. There is a young man called Rockefeller, Dr. John Rockefeller. A very die hard man of God. He not go so much. And this man has a higher quantum of the Holy Spirit. To control him, including his business. There was a time when the time he needed him. Okay, there was a building to become a shareholder in that company. As of that time in 1912, before the sinking of Titanic, that company was the highest company in the world. Because they were making money. They wanted him to become a shareholder. And the man accepted. But when the man went to work, they asked for spirit. That's why I tell you that he acts like a person. He said, Daddy, he's talking to the Holy Spirit. Should I go into this building? The Holy Spirit said, No. Ah! He picked up the cross and said, I cannot be a part of it. They were begging him. No. He said, My daddy said, I should not be. He did not reach six months. That is how Titanic crash. Although that invested millions in that building. They lost their home. In everything you do, you need the Holy Spirit. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Make Holy Spirit your companion. I want you to shout. Say, neighbor. Make Holy Spirit your companion. In everything you do, allow Him to lead you. Now, most of us, Holy Spirit has been leading us. But most times we don't allow Him to talk so that we can. Already we broke our ear. Most of us are so kind that even when he's talking with him, look at the brother. And the Holy Spirit spoke in here. And he said, Yes, that if it were some of you say no, it's not the true voice. Because you have already remember how many million you have to make in that business. How many dollars? But the Holy Spirit said no. He said, Thank you, Daddy. Because whenever the Holy Spirit is speaking, there will be a reason. And the reason is for your own good, it's for your own work good. You can't become a friend of the Holy Spirit and make mistake. Are you understand? Know what I'm saying? Why we have been making mistakes is that when the Holy Spirit tells us to do a thing, because most things the Holy Spirit tells us to do does not make sense into our senses. Because He leaves us in a way we don't understand. Imagine the children of Israel, look at this. The Holy Spirit was leading them like a cloud. And how can the Holy Spirit lead you? And we lead you into the darkness, into the darkness. Everybody sit down. Holy Spirit can lead you into the darkness. If you see you in the natural eyes. But the Holy Spirit led them into the darkness. And we don't raise high. And that was why the multitude, they started questioning Moses. How could God have led us into the darkness? So there are times the Lord may lead you into a place you don't think is leading you, into a tight corner. But at the end, the tight corner shall be well used. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, at the end, you know the story. How God parted the race and the enemies died in, and they moved out successfully because He knows what to do at the right time. 
listen to me. Every child of God is a man that knows what to do at all times. Because the Holy Spirit knows what to do at all times. Now listen to me. A child of God cannot get it wrong. Cannot get it wrong. Except the Holy Spirit is not with you. When the Spirit of God is leading you, He will make everything right at the right time. Those of you that think you are passing through hard time, relax. It's a matter of time. You will see that the God who is leading you is more than capable. Church, I get what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit is a guide. Because He said, I will guide you into all truth. I will guide you into all truth. And Jesus is the truth. So he will lead you to Jesus. Bless the Lord. He will guide you into Jesus. Who is the truth? He said, I am the way, I am the way to Then say the Holy Spirit shall guide you into all truth. He will lead the land of truth. The word comforter is also translated helper. So the Holy Spirit is also your helper. Say, I am. I am. If the Holy Spirit is helping you, then you don't have a problem. Now listen to me. A child of God is a man that don't have problem. A man that don't have problem. Our problem is not to the cross. He is my helper. No wonder. David was given by the Spirit when he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If God is your helper, then you will lack nothing. No matter how the economy swings, no matter how the economy pushes, if the Lord is your helper, you will not lack it. I prophesy to you, every bondage you are in now, I command that bondage to tear And the God will say, you don't want to say, I don't know the challenges. I don't know the evil. I don't know the power working against you. But the power of the resurrection of Christ by the incident of the Holy Spirit, I command every mountain on their way to the left of now. That's your enemy seeking. I command every mountain in your way to the left of It's done. Now, the Greek word for the comfort, for the word comforter is Plaretus. P R A L E T U X. Paracletus. Paracletus is the name for the word comforter. In the amplified version of the Bible, it renders the word comforter in seven meaning. The word Holy Spirit, sorry. Is rendered with seven meaning according to Amplified Bible. Number one, he is a helper. Number two, he is a comforter. Number three, he is a counselor. Number four, he is an advocate. Five, he is an intercessor. Six, he is a standby. Just as you have standby generator, he is by you. As I am preaching now, he is by my side. Praise the Lord. As you are listening, is by your side. The Lord is standby. A standby man. Number seven, he is our instructor. He is our instructor. Every company, especially in engineering sectors, they have instructors. They have instructors. And that is why companies don't always get it wrong. Because instructors are there to instruct you. Do you know the work of an instructor? When there is challenge, when there is wrong, they will come and instruct you. They are expatriates. They are knowledgeable people. They don't feel. They have been in that people for close to 30, 20 years. They know it. So, man that knows it is by yourself. Amen. Are you not happy? Yes, that the man that knows it is by yourself. Which means you know it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, the man that knows it is by your side. Amen. 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 Now, if you are a child of God and born again, you will find out that the word of God constitutes counseling. The word of God constitutes what? Counseling. Every pastor is a counselor. Every genuine believer is a counselor. Do you know why we are counselors? Because a counseling man is in us. Whenever there are major issues, what do you do? You go to him. David, look at the problem and he will give you the solution. And one man that had 
the Holy Spirit in him was the man called Joseph. When there was danger in Israel, they met him for casting, praising the Lord. Hallelujah. And Pharaoh told his dream. And he canceled Pharaoh and told Pharaoh what to do. And when he did it, he would have a solution. Whatsoever solution you have, problem so you are passing through the solution is already you do you know that yes. Eh? Yes. if you have the holy spirit he has answer to that problem yes. and the solution is here yes. are you getting what i'm saying yes, sir. remember as many that are led by the spirit of god they are the two sons of the Lord. Yes. the word led is also interpreted as so the Holy Spirit leads you or directs you or guides you. Sons of God are expected to be led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit is a power to witness with our own spirit that we are the sons of God. Romans 8:16. The Spirit of God, power to witness with our own spirit. Most times, people tell me they are born again. I always ask them this question: How do you know? I asked somebody in an interview, how do you know you are born again? He said, because I go to church. How do you know you are born again? Hey, because my pastor said so. No. That the pastor said so is not the enough reason to comfort you because the Spirit of God bears witness with your own spirit that you are born again. So if you are born again, you are in what man. There is what they call in what witness. In what word? Witness. He will witness to you that you are born again. Every child of God must know that is the child of God. Why? Born again brings about changes. Who are you before you got born again? And who are you today? If you have been smoking and drinking for the past one year, and you born again, and you are still smoking and drinking, children, there is a question to your born again. If you were in Manasa for the past one year, and since you born again, you are still humanizing. Eh? Every night, one day, every child, even if it's a half girl, that you are not born again, that you, are, sorry, that you said you are born again, and you are still living in that kind of you will die. Some of us who are young, some of us we are into fraudulent activities, even when we are born again. In that case, our born again become questionable. What is born again? To be born again is to have the life of Christ. To have the life of who? All those things in Jesus, did you should be doing it. A child of God is a man that is taken after Christ, not after the world. To be born again means to be separated from the world, to be set apart. To be set apart. To become the light of the world. That's what it means. If you are here or you are listening to me, that your life is not reflecting the life of Jesus Christ, you must have a change of character. You must have a change of living. You must embrace Jesus in your life. It's not how long you have been in church, but how well you are in church. Not how well how well you started pastoring, but how well you are pastoring. Are you really pastoring like Jesus? Are you really living like Jesus? Now, if you are here, you still have another call. You are, you are you go to heaven. Some of us are called as ministers of gospel. We have soiled our hands. We are operating in another way. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. If you are not genuinely born again, or you are into any mistake or whatever, whatever. If you come in contact with a genuine man of God, he knows. Praise the Lord. Don't think people don't know you. People know you. Because any man that is possessed of the spirit, when he comes in contact with you, he will know you. Church, I get one say. Many years back, I went to a church, a museum, a church, a gathering. I saw darkness in the altar. And I told the young man who took me to that place, I said, This altar has darkness. I am going. He said, What do you mean? I said, What I'm seeing, you can see it. And the man was praying, I saw darkness all over me. I said, Go for me. Everybody we had a shaking one or one or one or one, but there was darkness in the young man. Why? Because I applied on the spirit. I left the place. I went to another church many years ago. The young man was speaking in tongues. I used my very Holy Ghost word balance. And 
And I checked what the man was talking. I couldn't get what the man because I have this gift of interpretation. If I'm in a place where you're speaking in tongues, I know what you're speaking. The Holy Spirit will connect me immediately. Whatever you're saying, I will. I will just keep quiet. When I go to where people are talking in tongues, one thing I do, I will begin to design the voice coming. I designed the voice. He was talking rubbish. It wasn't the voice of the kingdom. I said, I can't be in this place. Why some of you visit the wrong name of God is because you are not led by the Spirit. Listen to me, you're listening to me from any of these social media. Listen to me. Listen to me now. All those people you have been meeting that are telling you your problem, that cannot tell you their own problem. He told me, he told me. One thing about this so called prophet is that they will tell you that they don't tell themselves. <laughs> they are not telling you who is he. Have you consulted the Holy Spirit to know the man? Even those of you listening to me, it will profit you more to ask God, this is my pastor, who is he? So that he will tell you the kind of pastor you have. Allow the Holy Spirit to tell you about your man of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to tell you about your prophet. In that way, it will help you. Because in this administration, so many things are happening, so many things are happening. So that your pastors are letting go I don't know if you know. It is only you, 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 you that have never the right to serve God. How the Holy Spirit will release on certain things. If tonight as you are praying, this hour as you are praying, your prayer should be Holy Spirit and watch my eye with the Holy Ghost icon so that I can see. Speak to me about this, about this, about this, about this, about that. Because the Holy Spirit will never lie, will never Telling you, yes, in that relationship, that marriage you want to go into, and the Holy Spirit will tell you about the man you want to marry. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit do send our husband to us? Who know that? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. If you are here, you are not yet married, you want to marry, ask the Holy Spirit to send your husband. Yeah. Hello? Hi. Church, I can not say, yes. hey, the young man loved me. The young man loved me. How do you know he loves me? You know what you mean? You know what you mean? Have you heard the Holy Spirit give the man a man or not? You can't be a child of God you want to marry. That the Holy Spirit cannot speak to you. You are only carried away by the clamor. He's buying me sauna. He's buying me good thing. He's taking me to Kermagal. He took me to Sripu. The man said, the man that is carried, you know him. Your hair will become a pursuit for the carry. Because the man has been carrying many girls. It's not only you, he has carried for 20 persons. He had a 21 one. And soon he will soon drop you and still care for another man. But if the Holy Spirit can speak to you, you will be ready to run off him and run off him. We are making mistakes because we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us. Most pastors are crowd conscious. They are ready to do anything to get crowd. Is it all about crowd? It's all about pastoring. A mother cannot pastor hundred sheep. You will not go to me one thousand. You will die before your time. The whole body has seen you pastor way. Have you also been asking the Holy Spirit for directions? Before you release any message, do you ask the Lord to teach you? Or you just wake up, whatever you want to preach, you preach. And that is why you are not making an impact. Those of you that want to leave your place of worship, do you also ask God, should I leave? Praise the Lord. Hello. Hi. You see that man, hey, you see you, he's performing miracles. It is better to ask God first. Where am I? Where am I going to? Where should I be in the next 20 years? Where am I now? Is it able to take me to where you want me to be in the next 20 years? These questions you ask the Holy Spirit is very vital. Because he is like a guy, he is like a guy. He's a counselor. Meet him, he will catch you. Listen to me. This our dispensation is not a dispensation whereby you give me the prophetic. No, unless on real cases, unless on real cases, where the Holy Spirit will direct you from who to meet. Otherwise, the same spirit that the so-called man of God has, you have it. Church, am I 
name of Jesus. Go to an inward man. Let him talk to you. The Holy Spirit will give you answer for your inward man. Learn how to study. Because in studying the word of God, the Holy Spirit is going to bless you. We are going to look into diverse ways through which the Holy Spirit talks to us. I want you to be in that service. Don't miss to be in next Sunday's service. Praise the Lord. So, am I talking? Yes, sir. We need to learn various ways. We will teach you this week. Various ways. The Holy Spirit. But today we are just dwelling on the introductory part of it. Introducing it to the Holy Spirit and how He helps you. By next week we will begin to dissect it. Various ways through which the Holy Spirit can live in the world. Christian. Praise the Lord. Church, am I talking? Don't miss the Sunday service. It will be very wonderful. You must learn as a believer to listen to the inward witness. In this way, two things are involved. One, you must prosper. Two, you must prosper and you must be number two. You must be what the Lord wants you to do. You must find your inheritance when you listen. No man will listen to the Holy Spirit and make mistakes. The reason why we keep making mistakes in our life is that we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. Now listen to me. I know my sheep. My sheep know me. I call them. They come. If they are calling them, they will not come. Because they have mastered my voice. We must learn how to master the voice of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They will spoke to Jesus during his temptation and cried. Spoke to Jesus. Turn this stone into bread. Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread. Why? Because Jesus has mastered the voice of his master. He has mastered it. So when the devil is talking, you know that his master don't talk to that. Really? This is how my master talks. You know the voice of God. Most of us are making mistakes because we have not mastered the voice of God. Like Samuel did not master the voice. Eli mastered the voice. Even if Eli mastered the voice, but Eli wasn't in. Two things are involved. When I started, I said, One, well, you must allow the master to lead you. You must master the voice. Eli mastered the voice, but Eli wasn't allowed him to lead. Samuel allowed him to lead, but Samuel had not mastered the voice. Samuel, sir, he went to the organ. Master, are you calling me? Now, listen, listen. Why is it that Holy Spirit choose the voice of the master? Are you learning something, George? Why is it that the Holy Spirit decided to choose the voice of the master? Because the Holy Spirit comes to our level of understanding. I mean, you can't say. We get to the end. He went to the level of Samuel. Because it's the master that will come and you take it very seriously. Master, are you calling me? Say no. Huh? They went back again. Okay, sis, don't call me. Then they are in here when they started sleeping. The voice came again. Some, some, it's a master, but you call me. Because I know you are voice. It is your word. I did not call me. Go and sleep. Talk. Why did the Holy Spirit have to call three times? Is a significance in the number three. In the number three, in the Bible, there is a sign. Three sign is a sign of completion. Sign of all. Church, I can not say. Remember, Jesus stayed three days in the grave. Remember, the first came how many times? The number three and seven, very significant in the Bible. Three times. You went back again. For sure, you call me. So when you call again, tell him speak for the Sabbath. This is an old man teaching the younger one. Why? Because Eli is known for it. God has been speaking. Eli has mastered it. But Eli is not ready to give himself to the leadership. Samuel, Samuel, he said, 
speak for thy servant. If someone did not make that statement, the voice wouldn't have come and did. That is a sign of welcoming. Speak for thy servant. It's ready to hear. And he came down. You must tell the spirit, I am ready to hear. Otherwise, they will not force you. If someone has said, don't speak. It's a gentle speak. It's a gentle mouth. It would have gone this way. Thank God. It's a speak. For I am not going to hear. And he downloaded it. And as he said it, that is how it was. But look at the mistake here I made. After Samuel went and delivered the message, he said, well, let it be very careless man. If it was somebody like David, he would have knelt down and put on ash. Say, God have mercy. He would have called the children meeting, stop that nonsense. Maybe the Lord would have changed his head. He would have told the children, stop this nonsense you are doing. Stop that rubbish you are doing. Maybe the Lord would have changed his head. But he said, well, as he pleases the Lord, what a careless man. And the anger of the Lord did come upon the people. May the anger of the Lord not come upon you. That's your heaven is sick. Can't you see sick? I said, may the anger of the Lord not come upon you. It's a dangerous thing, you know. For God's anger to come upon you. Who will save you? If I start dealing with you now, you can go to God. He will save you. But when you know you are going to be dealing with you, you are in trouble. May you never enter the struggle. Yeah. You don't know what I'm saying. Maybe you have brother Pharaoh. Pharaoh will tell you how disastrous it is. Maybe you have brother Saul. Saul in the Bible will tell you how disastrous it is to fall in the hand of God. And that is why. Amen. Amen. May we be sensitive to this so that we get all these things. Avoid distractions. The Holy Spirit is taking us in a different way. Now, open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27. Proverbs 20, 27. Proverbs 20, 27. It says, The Spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the dead. Wow! Why is it that the Holy Spirit, Jesus, and the Bible references will always consider burning? He said, Out of your belly shall flow the rivers of the waters. And now look at what he's also saying. He has been saying that the spirit of the Lord is the candle. No, so it is said today, he said, The spirit of, of the man is the candle of the Lord. The spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord that searches in our inward being, which means through our spirit is where the Lord speaks to us. He speaks to us through our inward witness. Are you getting it? He uses our spirit to talk to God. So God speaks to us through our spirit. And that is why you must consecrate your spirit to hear when God speaks. God spoke to Samuel when Samuel was sleeping in the temple close to the Ark of Covenant. For God to speak to you, you must be closer to him. You must be closer to him. Church and mentor to him. We talk about the See, in this world and in the Old Testament, he was leading them by their fantasical senses. But in this our dispensation, he is leading us to our inward man, to our inward man. Man is not like an animal. Man is not like an animal. I think I've said it before. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. So many persons may understand this. So I want to tell you the difference between this and the living of the present time. And it's that since chapter 3, verse 20 to 21. All goes unto one place. All are of the dust, and all come to dust again. 21. Wherefore I perceive that there is nothing better than for a man should be. We are, brother Solomon was talking in the flesh, he was in the flesh. He 
it is referring to this physical body. He's trying to say all men, everybody die. Animal die, human beings die. But is human beings animal? No. We are spiritual animals. Because we have spirit. Jesus did not die for an article. He did not die for the beast. He died for all of us. Because we have spirit. Because we have spirit. And when we are born again, we are real spirit people. We are not like animal. Pata pata man die go. No. We don't just die go. There is a life after death. There is a life after death. If you are here, you are not taking the word of God serious. All this word of God you hear, all the teaching, to a man who is not taking it serious, the Lord will use it against the person on the judgment day. Because as you are hearing this word, it should produce a faith in your life. But you say, faith coming by hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord come on. John, can we talk again? We know the account of Genesis, how God created man. And how God created unto man. A man became a living soul. The word living soul here yeah, means living spirit. Living what? Spirit. Praise it the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus said, God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If God is a spirit, then you need a spirit. You need a spirit to worship him. So every worshiper of God must worship him in spirit. Church, are we talking? Yes, sir. We must worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Some may say, let's marry. After all, tomorrow nobody is close. We know our tomorrow. We know our tomorrow. Every child of God knows his tomorrow. Because our future is hidden in God. I know my tomorrow. What do I know? My tomorrow shall be better than today. Praise the Lord. Because the path of a righteous is brighter and brighter and brighter. There is no dull moment for a child of God. Say, I hear. Our kingdom is a kingdom of no dull moment. Every moment is good. Because that is the path of the righteous. Not even when the Holy Spirit is in me. Not when it's in me. I said, I prophesied unto you. You will see good things. Amen. Good things shall follow you to see. Millions shall follow you to see. Amen. You will not see shame. Amen. I prophesied your life. Amen. You see my contract. Amen. I prophesied to you. We see the contract. And the job will say. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And hold all things have become new. Listen to this. Hebrews chapter 4, 12. It says, For the word of God is weak and powerful, and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to divide and asunder of the soul, the spirit of the joints and marrow. And is a designer of the thoughts and even of the heart. Instant of the heart. The word of God designs. Why? Because the word of God contains spirit. Contains what? Spirit. Jesus said in the book of John 6, 63. He said, the word has been come to you. They are spirit and they are life. So the word of God is spirit. Why? We must dwell in the spirit. That is why we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us into understanding the word of God. Without the Holy Spirit, the word of God will become meaningless. And that is why the unbelievers don't understand. Why? Because the Spirit of God is not in them. They read this Bible like a literature. When you read the Bible like a literature, you get nothing out of it. Church, I get to what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Hello. 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 First Corinthians 14 14. For if I pray in a long time, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. He said, my spirit prays, and my understanding is unfruitful. That if I pray carnally, but if I pray in the Holy Spirit, come on, my spirit get ignited. 
with the Spirit of God. And it becomes. So when we speak in tongues, what we are already doing is we are speaking in the heavenly language that we don't understand. Are you the person? Who knows if that is the language that was they were speaking before God scattered man's language? Who knows? The language that Adam and Eve spoke. It's the heavenly language. Praise the Lord. It's not a man ego. Neither is it Hebrew. It's the heavenly language which we speak when we are in spirit. And that is the language we are going to use to communicate in the heavens. Are you that one saying? That is why I keep telling you that we are already in heaven. Because even when we are here on earth, we can speak the heavenly language. But when we go there, it becomes our normal language. It's not going to be English, it's not going to be French, it's not going to be Igbo, Absa, or Yoruba, but a language that everybody will understand. And Jesus is also in that language. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Church, am I talking? Church, I hear what I'm saying. So, how does the Holy Spirit lead us? Don't forget that the Holy Spirit leads us through our inward weakness, through our inward weakness. Stand to your feet. Lift up your hands to the If you know you are here, you are not born again. If you know you are here, you are not born again. You don't have this Holy Spirit. Now listen to me. It doesn't matter how many years you have been in this church. It doesn't matter how many years you have been here in the world. It doesn't matter how many persons you have converted. There are many that have converted souls that are not born again. If you are listening to me in any of the social medias, and you want to give your life to Jesus, or you are listening anywhere in any of the platform, listen to me now. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I know I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Whichever way, I have seen a person. Forgive me. Write my name in your book of life. Release the Holy Spirit into my spirit. Release it, O Lord, because I need it. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for forgiving me in Jesus' name. I want to pray for you. Father, you want my listeners. In many of the social media platform and those in church here listening to me. Father, they can pray. You said no one will come to you that you will cast away. And because they have asked for forgiveness, Lord, I pray you forgive them. Write your names in your book of life and delete it from your book of life. I pray, God, give them the Holy Spirit like you have given unto me that will guide them into all truth that will reveal yourself to them. Thank you, Father, because I've forgiven them in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you are saying this prayer for the first time, then you are watching me in any of these social media platforms, please write us to that email address that you see on the screen. Let us know you. We will be praying for you. Share your testimony to us on how the Lord has visited you. We are going to send you many materials that will help you grow. Remember, when it come for this salvation, distance is no longer in your head. We want to fellowship with you. We want to make you. We have so many materials that we have that will build you up. And for those of you in the church here, listening to me, if you are giving your life to you, attend our weekly programs and make yourself known to me. For those of you that pray this prayer, Make sure you see me after church so that we will guide you and counsel you more. May the Lord continue to bless you. May the Lord continue to lead you. In Jesus' name we pray. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that whenever we post our videos, you will have the free of charge. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. I love you all.